Hey, are you guys ready to watch me fail miserably at Factorio version 0.15? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show. My name is Mike, aka Operation DX, and why would I suggest that I'm going to fail miserably? Well, my test game before this Let's Play series didn't exactly go very smoothly, and that doesn't... Uh, Give me a lot of confidence for the Let's Play series, but the show must go on. <laughs> anyway, the update is huge. They really rearranged a lot of things in the game. They changed the formulas on things, which makes it more complicated. You have to route things in a lot of different directions. It's certainly interesting. And then you have to tie in the whole nuclear power system into the new system. I mean, I already have a hard enough time tying in the copper plate system into the oil system. And now we have nuclear to add on top of that and some other bells and whistles. I mean, once you get to the point where you can do logistics, which I didn't even get to because the new science is freaking insane in this game. You'll see. All right, so we are still in a experimental version of Factorio. There's been two updates to the game, so we are in 0.15.2. The latest update applied a fix that um, needed to be done for your drills because there was a problem with the flow of sulfuric acid to your drills because that's how you mine uranium. And they fixed that, and it's good. It really needed to be done because it was a disaster. Um, well, it wasn't a disaster. It just made things a bit more complicated, honestly. All right, so there's that. Now, originally, I was going to play this completely modless, but there are some pet peeves of mine with Factorio. And I always set out when I make mod to like correct them. Now, clearly the mod that I used in the previous series was way overpowered and I wanted to have a bit more of a pure experience with Factorio. So let me go ahead and show you what I've done here. So I had to dump my old uh, mod that I called DX Unbalanced and it was super, super cheaty. Now my problem originally and what got me creating that mod was I hated that solar panels were the be-all, end-all of your power system. That has been since fixed in 0.15 where you have nuclear power. And it produces a fair amount of power. So it's completely redundant to have a solar panel and accumulator systems that can you know, run your entire base without you know, using the new systems. And I didn't want to create something like that would just completely bypass a really cool aspect of the game. So that's gone out of this mod. So no overpowered solar panels, no overpowered accumulators. What I have here is a set of modules that I've created that actually have some negatives in them, opposed to last time where the modules I had were super overpowered. They are majorly cut down comparative to the last modules. But... What drives me nuts about Factorio is, I mean, they give you, say, a, product, a productivity module that gives you like a 4% bonus to your, your production, and then it costs 40% more power. That's awful, considering all the loops you have to get through in order to get to even modules in the game. So uh, my modules, I don't know, they feel right. So another thing that is a little bit of a pet peeve with me with this game is I don't like how short the underground belts run. They only run five tiles, so I made them run 60 tiles. The pipes and belts run 60 tiles. Uh, the belts do actually run, I think, eight or ten tiles, but they run 60. And the last thing I did was I made the player's inventory larger. So this isn't such a huge, cheaty mod in the respect of what it was last time. It's just kind of some conveniences, really. And it allows you to tidy up the factory a little bit better than what you would with belts pretty much freaking going everywhere because that's the way this game goes. Uh, but I don't know what would be worse, the, the modules or the larger player inventory. I mean, the larger player inventory... 
it's just you have more stuff in your inventory with 0.15 than you normally do with 0.14 or 0.13. You just you have to carry around a lot more to build some of the new things and it feels necessary to even have the vanilla game expand the player's inventory maybe through research. Maybe that's how I should have gone about it instead of just giving it all to you at once, but that's how I did it. Sorry, talking your ear off. We're at five minutes. Let's go ahead and hit play and get started here. I knew I would kind of talk your ear off in the beginning. So let me reiterate, 30-minute episodes for this series uh, instead of 20 minutes like my standard. It just feels better for this kind of series because this is going to run a little bit longer than my, like, I think my last Factorio ran like 20 episodes. I think that was because the modules were so overpowered. This is probably going to run a little bit longer, but with longer episodes, so it's going to kind of maybe even out. I think it's going to go longer than 20 episodes, honestly. So, anyways, some new interesting things with Point One Five. So, you've got a lot of different modes you can start with. You can even start with a cool one that like promotes um, rail production or like building rails between spots and stuff. We're not going to do that, but I am one of my main goals for this series is to run rails. Another goal is I want to have it better lit than the last series, so I want to research um, optics really early on. Fortunately, that is a first level research, so I'll have lights going on. And I want to kind of spread things out in general. So those are kind of my major goals for this series. Outside of that, who knows what's going to happen. It's completely random, the map generation. Okay. Resources, I'm not going to touch them. I'm going to leave them at absolute default. But I am going to play with the advanced settings. Uh, I'm going to just make a few adjustments and tweaks here and there. Nothing super crazy. But this is a new thing to Factorio version uh, 0 0.115. This is a new... I didn't even know some of these things maybe even existed. I don't know, like, you know, I didn't realize that maybe pollution damaged trees unless that's completely new to 0.15 or not. So we're going to change evolution a little bit. So time factor, we're going to nix that. It's 0 0.00004. You know, I mean, I know it's nothing, but, you know, getting rid of it. All right, I'm going to knock destroy factor down to 0 0.002 to 0 0.001. Uh, let's see if we can get that. There we go. And then pollution, I'm just going to knock that down a tad, even though it's 0 .000. Actually, I probably can leave that alone. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tweak it back just, just to like, I don't know, maybe like 500. Can I? No, it, it won't let me uh, use my number keys. 400, that's good. All right. So we slow down evolution just a tad. Uh, really, it's not going to have a dramatic effect on gameplay. All right, pollution dissipation rate. I'm going to turn this up just like about, I don't know, maybe 10%. So it, it'll slightly reduce the dissipation of pollution. Um, so, I mean, obviously that means it's not going to linger around as long. Um, there's tool tips, though, how fast pollution dissipates naturally. Um, I'm also going to turn up the damage here to like two-thirds. So like 7,000. Can I use my arrow key here? Yeah, I can. Um, I'm going to leave this alone. All right, so enemy expansion. I am going to play with this a little bit too. So minimum chunks between new bases. I kind of like the biter spread out. So I'm going to set this to like six. I'd say that's about 50%. I'll leave uh, this to 7 maximum expansion, so 6, 7 roughly. Uh, minimum group size, I'm going to set this to like 3, and then maximum I'm going to set it to like 15. So just slightly tweaking it down just a little bit, but nothing super crazy. Alright, so per episode, I'm thinking the biters can expand 3 times. So I'm going to do 10 minutes. So 30-minute episodes, they can expand uh, three times in one episode. I don't know how threatening that'll be, but it's going to tweak them back just a bit. This all looks great to me. Uh, I don't need to change too much else. I like that they added this to the game. Uh, you, you can even turn some of these things off, which is really cool. If you just want to kind of play a game without worrying about 
the biters, but I want to have a little bit of a threat. I want to like fight the biters. I just want to spread them out a little bit more, and uh, I don't know. The the giant bases with the giant they all still exist. That that's that. I mean, there's a certain point where you hit that. They just there's so many biters you have to like be all super powered up, and if you're not, you're just gonna die a horrible death. You're super squishy anyway. So, all right, this is the most interesting point. Sorry, we're at 10 minutes and a half, and uh, we're just clicking this button here. This is what is going to be like, what are we going to get? Okay, this doesn't look too bad so far, but uh, let's go ahead and... I, I just like to read this thing. For, I don't know, I'm just, I'm crazy. <laughs> this is the Factorio Free Play. Your task is to launch a rocket into outer space. I added the outer thing, yeah. Do this by constructing a rocket silo and launching a rocket with a satellite. And the satellite should give you, like, radar coverage of, the, like, a giant area. At least I think it should. You will need to research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket silo. Start small. Work your way up with automation. And don't forget to protect yourself from the natives, which I'm very bad at. All right, 11 and a half minutes, and we're finally getting started. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tab. What do we got? We have two copper spots right next to each other. Coal, iron below it. Uh, copper, iron, stone. Little dab of uranium. I see two spots, some oil. Let's just open the map here. The, the new map's awesome, you guys. So, oh, you just saw that. Like, if you hover your mouse over the iron, but you know what's cool, too, is you can zoom in, and you can actually see the, the game board, which is kind of cool. But, yeah, you can hover your mouse over the, the spots and see how much uh, ore is in each spot. Pretty nice. Uh, this is just a baby spot of uranium. This is also a baby spot of uranium. And you normally have to go out, but that's good. It forces you to, like, get out there and figure things out. All right, so... Actually, this is kind of a nice view, so you can just click and drag. Uh, this is beautiful, guys. This is this is a beautiful start. Um, it's definitely a keeper. So the two copper spots not not so like relevant, but we have we're not obstructed here, and we have water right next to this, like this whole system here. We can really get jamming. All right, so where is stone? We got stone up here. Looks like it's in the trees a little bit do we have this looks like a little dab of stone right here is it <laughs> it's, it's like one little block of stone all right uh and then we have stone over here which looks like it's in the trees okay i think i think we're this is great this is a great start look at this giant giant coal thing i can like I can create a centralized area. All right, the, the thing that I'm worried about is is just the stone. I just want to take a quick look and see where it's at, what's going on with it. All right, so it is buried in the trees, but we have this kind of like kind of uncovered area here. Yeah, that's not bad. I think I'm going to go to that one. I don't think I'm going to go to the, the tree one. Actually, this is a great... Thing to get right here in the beginning of the game. Let's go ahead and uh, mine this. It gives you 20 stone off the off the cuff. That's beautiful. We can use it. In fact, we should build the um, furnaces with that right away, immediately, without delay. Okay, let's drop our burner miner and our furnace and mine a little bit of coal. And we're off and running here, essentially. I like how close these are to each other. It really helps streamline the start a lot. I mean, you just never know what kind of start you're going to get with <laughs> this game. You could be in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the desert. Uh, the worst is when you're in the middle of the forest. I think that is, like, the most painful start. Because you have to cut down so many freaking trees. Oh my gosh, it's... It's awful, 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 awful. Yes, we are in the dark. I'm going to try to fix that immediately like I suggested in the beginning. Already 15 minutes in, so obviously we're not going to be able to accomplish a lot 
with this particular episode. I guess I can talk about a couple of things for new players watching this series. All right, so let me mine one of these. Let me get a tree. Both of these are usable as a fuel source. So if we open up our inventory and hover over them, they say that, you know, what their fuel value is. So uh, wood gives you like a, a four megajoule fuel amount and uh, coal gives you an eight megajoule fuel amount. And that is, essentially that those numbers are determined. It determines how long that they're going to run in each of these things. So coal being double, it runs for twice as long kind of thing. And then it pretty much goes up from there. I mean, when we get to electricity and all that, uh, yeah, that kind of electricity and power kind of plays a thing. There are actually like fuel blocks and stuff. We'll, we'll get into that later um, if you haven't played the game. Another thing we can do is we can hit the tab key and we can see what is inside of each of our either crates or, you know, um, we can have storage bins or factories or whatever we can see what's being produced in the factory if we just hit the tab key which is kind of nice we can also hit the map key and hit this little red button here to see where we're producing pollution it kind of shows up in this red box and uh, it's pretty helpful we have a lot of things that we can check out uh with the new ui the new ui is really great i love it love it it's fantastic all right, I think we probably have enough plate to kind of do a couple of things here. So first thing, we want to get a couple more burners. We already have, you know what, we can build three, four. Four is actually perfect. So the first thing I tend to like to do is stick two burner miners right next to each other perfect we have one coal I mine that coal for demonstration purposes but actually worked out here um, this is I don't even know if you consider this a trick anymore this is something that you would probably naturally learn maybe if you play the game but just kind of you can see where the arrows are pointed and the arrows indicate where the resource is going to go so if you take two burner miners and put it on top of coal they'll just kind of feed each other and power each other up and this, this is a nice little kind of auto collection system that will uh, get you some coal. Very helpful, especially for when that happens. All right, the next resource we want to start collecting is copper. Kind of less important. I'm totally going the wrong way. Uh, kind of less important in the beginning stages, but you do need green circuits and coils, copper coils, or cables. I always want to call them coils, but they're copper cables. Oh, we don't have enough stone. We don't have enough stone. But that's okay. So, we'll go ahead and uh, get the stone started. I think we need to cut, cut down a couple of trees so that we can build a uh, wooden chest just store some stone we need some trees for power poles I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a power system up in uh, 12 minutes but we will see what we can do um, everything's fairly close so it's not gonna be too much of an issue alright so we're gonna go ahead and drop this guy here and we're not gonna put a furnace here we can turn stone into baked bricks however I don't know if we can do that yet can we yeah stone brick so if you put a furnace behind a burner miner you'll get brick instead of raw stone however we can't use brick to make the um, furnaces right so that's kind of a kind of an issue for the beginning of the game. All right. So we need to head back over to our copper, drop off this furnace. We're going to hit the uh, two burner miners collecting coal. 
and it looks like our uh, our plate is not moving. We want to fix that ASAP and get our copper moving along. How are we doing? We got 10 minutes. I don't know. We might be able to. There's a lot of, I mean, water's like right freaking here. So we might, maybe, just maybe, be able to do this. We should definitely double up on uh, the, um, oh, we need stone. Actually, I mean, it seems kind of redundant to be walking back and forth, but it actually is, it works out for me. <laughs> I actually am kind of doing something, you know, uh, <laughs> while we're, we have downtime. We just have downtime. There's nothing we can do about it. It just is. All right, there we go. Now we have a good amount. So I'm going to build a second burner. I'm going to build two more furnaces. That is just we're gonna double up plate in the beginning. It's just it's just it helps streamline. And uh, the day night cycle is fairly fast in this game. That's why I want to get optics researched as soon as possible. I'm hitting like every button besides the buttons that I want to be hitting. Okay, we have no coal. I have my auto save set to ten minutes. You can change that in the options. I also have one of the things that's really convenient. If we go in the options real quick, go to other. I have technology window pops open when research is uh, complete unticked. Uh, I like that much, much, much better than what I used to have. Where every time a technology researches, the the text screen just pops up in your face. I kind of hate that now. <laughs> so uh, that's one of the things that I've done that I like a lot. Um, and then what happens is is this up here where it says T my mouse is uh, it just flashes and flashes and flashes it kind of gives you an indicator hey your, your tech's done research a new tech because sometimes what happens is it's like when you research a new tech and you're doing things you forget that you're not researching anything <laughs> and uh, that can be kind of problematic if you're you know wanting to move things along and you're waiting on certain research to get to the next research and you're not researching, you don't even realize that you're not researching. It can be kind of an issue. Alright, 36. How are we doing? We got 8 minutes. I wonder. So we can build offshore. Then two gens. And then I think plates are malfunction. Uh, in point one five, the uh, boiler steam engine thing is totally different than it was in point one three point one four totally different I love it I love it and the ratio is really easy to understand so it's for two steam engines for every uh, one boiler so it's a really easy thing to remember I don't even know what the ratio was on the old like I had no ideas like do I build eight and then like you know, 10 engines or, or whatever. There was a, you know, a ratio, but it's like, I, I didn't know what it was. And it, I don't know, it was too, I don't know. Not to say that other things aren't complicated. And I don't know those ratios, because I don't. Uh, <laughs> certainly not going to be a speed run. And I would be interested to see how the speed run guys handle the new update. The new update adds a lot of, like I said, depth and complication to systems that were once familiar and now they are not so much in the familiar area all right so i'm going to kind of run this like off near the i don't want to run it into that i almost want to run it down which is something i don't typically like to do but it's just, we have all this space down here. So, yeah, we're going to run it down. Okay. So, in order to run it down, what we're going to do is... We're going to rotate this this way. I think I'm going to come straight off this pipe. And uh, put this... So, uh, these are now 
two by three bot blocks. Much bigger instead of the one by ones is what the uh, the boilers used to be. So they're they're big. And they changed how much energy and how much heat is produced by these. So the steam engines are 900 kilowatts now instead of were they 600 kilowatts? I'm not I'm not sure what they used to be. Oh, you know, that's kind of it's kind of a problem here. Well, I can, I can route the belt in here. That's not such a such a bad issue. Okay. Let's see. 5 minutes. Not bad. I got a little bit of a power system up here. So let's go ahead and grab this coal out of here. Looks like one of our burners is kind of... Yeah, let's grab this plate. Give me your plate. I'm sure I got a little bit of copper by now. Let's grab that while we are kind of waiting for things to fill. And that should be enough to let me make two more engines. And then... After that, I think what I want to do is we're going to set up our labs. We're going to research optics. Then we're going to research like the basic stuff like logistics and automation. We'll get all that going. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and manually fill. You can see how fast these boilers pound through this. They have to heat up the water initially. So if we take a look at this, um, the water has to heat up. I don't, it doesn't, is it showing the heat? It gets up there. Oh, it says temperature 15 C. Oh, I think that's because we, uh, oh, there we go. 165. Yeah. So these used to be at a hundred C and now they're 165. All right. Uh, did I give myself enough wood to make? some power poles okay now since we have that all set up all the basic stuff we are going to pocket produce 45 science how much can we do right now 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 we have three minutes. I'd say I'm doing pretty good for this first episode, honestly. Let me just pat my own back here and blow purple smoke up my butt. Because <laughs> why not? Why not? I did start off saying I'm probably going to do disastrously bad, but I can blow purple smoke for the first episode. 35, 40, 45. And uh, maybe we should just do 50. All right, so that is pretty much all we're going to be able to do in this first episode because pocket producing science is really slow. So essentially all we're going to be able to do is collect resources. Let's go over before we hit 30 minutes and collect whatever stone. Whatever stone we got. Yeah. Um... Most certainly, we've got more than enough here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so normally your inventory cuts about right here. I think you get 60 slots uh, by default. And I think that's all you get. Later, you get something called logistic slots. But, oh my, we're, just not, we're not even close to that. So forget about it. Forget, even, forget I even mentioned it. <laughs> so we have du roughly double that. Um, you're going to see... This is going to come into play, uh, not not maybe in the first few episodes, but it come. It's it's surprising how much more of your inventory you use in point one five than you do in point thirteen or fourteen or the earlier versions, because you can kind of get away with not having so much. I, it just seems like things in general, even even without the settings to make things cost more, just cost more, and you know. So, yeah, it's kind of how it is. It's kind of how it is. Oh, we ran out of, we ran out of juice here. Let's fill this guy. 
fill this guy. We don't really. <laughs> Did I check check my? Uh... Yeah, I was just kind of going back and forth, making sure all this is filled up. Obviously, like the uh, beginning of the game said, we want to automate things. That's the pretty much the the meat and potatoes of Factorio and the fun of it is figuring out how to automate everything, and it is. It is, I want to say, it's not infinitely more complicated, but it is certainly more complicated in point one five than it has been in previous versions. Check out these, these new graphics, too, for, like, the ore. I really like it. Uh, some things are not high resolution yet, but, yeah, dude, it looks, it looks good. It looks good. I mean, if you zoom in too much, it's, it's kind of pixelated, but I don't know. A lot of this stuff, wow, this is a giant, how much, how much ore is... 500,000. I guess it just seems bigger than it actually is. I, I'm, I mean, something like this would normally be like, um, maybe about a million? And if you did, like, higher stats. Anyway. That's it for this first one, guys. Uh, I will see you guys for the next one, hopefully. And, uh, we won't have 10 minutes in the, uh, intro screen to, to deal with. So, straight gameplay from here on out. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a great day and take care.